Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part seven of my BB-8 version two, which I've got just here. Last time I put these skins on the body, some of which are removable so that I can access the inside to maintain it and change batteries and so on. And also gave this a drive and it works pretty well now I've got the smooth skins on. The inside is 3D printed and I've been working on this for a while. Check back on the previous episodes to see how it works, how it balances and how I put it together. Last time I said I was going to put slip rings on the internal hub so that I could put animatronics in some of these panels and the LEDs in the ball which is possible with this version. But in fact I think what I want to do is get the head looking more like the head. It's a bit of a blank canvas at the moment but that is going to involve electronics and lights. I think my head is a bit close to the ball at the moment. I think it needs to shift up a bit but that's fine because what I've done is put this hub in the middle here which is solvent welded to this ABS globe which was an actual globe with countries on. Have a look back on the previous parts to see that. And I've got this dolly with a hole in the top so um, this basically just sits on there so I've got no problems really um, putting an extension on that piece to raise it up very slightly to try and get that height correct. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and print a skirt to fit on this which has to fit around these casters so I don't think it's going to be quite as tight as the real BB-8 so we can try and get that head the right height. Here's the ring for the bottom of the head which of course is going to be printed upside down and that should print with no support material. Um, I've put some fairly crude details on here, I could of course stick bits on later but for now I've made it so I can print each third the same. As it is I'll probably leave it because most people don't look at the detail under there although of course it's not accurate. Here's one third of it which will fit on the Taz print bed. I've also made these red tabs to solvent weld between the pieces. This is all going to be printed in ABS so hopefully that will add some support around the seams. So that's a separate piece we'll print and then we'll stick all of the thirds together and hopefully that radius will fit just around the wheels. This is the head that I'm working on this time and this is the head from my version 1 BB-8 which you can find in my channel. So this one's slightly larger because that's the size of the dome I had at the time and this one is about 20mm smaller in radius. So what I did with this one was do a vacuum form over the head and then cut bits out of the vacuum form, stick them back in to make all of the details. So I'm going to do the same again, I've got a vacuum form I took of this dome before I painted it which I did while I was doing the body panels. I'm going to cut those sections out and stick them on. So I'm aware there are some 3D print files for BB-8's head from the BB-8 Builders Club but um, I think that head comes out at about 2 kilograms just in plastic. This is significantly lighter and so is this. So that's going to keep my head quite lightweight. I've marked around the bottom here by just putting this pen onto various height things and rotating the dome around to draw round it so that'll make the bottom ring parts. And on the top here I've just used a piece of plastic with some holes in and then I've just gone round obviously with those by sticking a pen in to mark all of the circles. Just marking out some details of where these things go roughly. I've printed a smaller hollow projector than last time because it was a bit chunky. So I think that's going to look good on there. And I've got some more details to go but just roughly working out where the contours go for the main parts. Just cutting pieces out of this vacuum form now, so I've got various rings and things that are going to fit on here. I've already cut out the place where the eye mounts and the hollow projector. I've just given those a rub down to get rid of the pen marks and make sure they're ready to take primer. I'm getting there, I've stuck some of these bits and pieces back on. And I've printed this eye piece, which has got more detail on than the first one I did, which is going to go in there. And it's got a red LED in it, just on the left hand side so that I can drill a hole through and mount that and wire it in from the inside. So I've stuck some more bits and pieces on, some more of those vacuum form bits painted orange. I've pretty much made up the details, I haven't looked to reference pictures too much. Pretty much the same as I did in the first one with the bits and pieces I cut out. So that's all that's left of the vacuum form. 
and all the rest has got stuck on. Obviously this will be weathered up so the edges will show up a bit better. So far I've got one of these skirt pieces printed. So if we stick that on the bottom, it's definitely looking a lot like BB-8's head. Obviously we've got that silver ring to paint on there and another two being printed at the moment. I've got all three of my skirt parts printed but you'll notice something strange has happened. Um, I've checked the CAD again and it's round in CAD but of course these are not round, this isn't the camera angle, they really do bulge out like this. And I noticed this a bit when I did the version 1 and I did it in four pieces. Um, so what's happened is ABS has shrunk as it's cooled and that's just the nature of the material. So the bottom of it is um, basically round but the top has really pulled in. So that's made this weird sort of three bulge shape and of course it doesn't fit anymore into the bottom of the dome. I tried to reshape one with a heat gun but I didn't have much luck and it split along the weak point. So I think this is probably the only 3D printing issue I've had for quite a long time. Normally the big heated bed's really good at getting the pieces dimensionally stable. If I printed it in PLA or PETG then it would probably be much better but that's just the nature of ABS. Unfortunately I want to solve and weld the ABS onto the dome and to the rest of the pieces so I'm going to have to print it in ABS so I'm going to take a couple of different approaches and see if that works out. My first approach is to print the thirds in thirds themselves so those are printed in three separate pieces and of course the warpage will be less because there's less tension across the layers because they are smaller so I could print nine pieces and stick those together and of course there'll be lots of seam lines where the nine pieces are stuck together um, but that may not look out of place on that skirt piece anyway so we'll see how that goes. The second approach of course is to print it all in one piece. Um, unfortunately it doesn't quite fit on the bed of the Taz so I've had to make it 2% smaller. Um, so we'll see how that turns out and whether the whole thing sticks. Unfortunately there's not space for a brim, or at least there's only a very small brim before I run out of the printable area. So um, we're going to see if that builds up and if that works out. I'm not sure what's going to happen, so we'll have a look later. Those three are finished, so I need to do that again twice. And over here, we've still got that printing and it seems to be going okay, so hopefully that will finish as well. Well it finished overnight, it took 6 hours 31 minutes in total. Um, it is slightly too small so you can see that it's not quite the same diameter and that was the only way I could fit it on the print bed, unless I hacked the printer perhaps. So, um, but it's come out pretty well so the overhangs are all absolutely perfect. So I think that's going to be my solution. So let's talk about electronics. In the head I'm going to put an Arduino but it's a very small one from Adafruit called a Gemma which has got three digital ins um, and it's run off uh, five volts at the moment. It's being powered off one of these USB boost adapters. That's actually going to power it in the head. I've got a couple of those. Obviously, they're really easy to charge with USB. They manage the battery charging and they give you a good five volts. Um, and I can swap these over if I'm doing a show during the day or USB charge really easily. So I've got a V out on here as well, which gives me five volt out, so I can power NeoPixels, which are individually addressable RGB LEDs. So I can put those all in a chain on one of the digital outs and control all of the lights in the head. And I've also got some tilt switches, which are the non-mercury ones with the ball bearing in. Um, I've got three digital connections on this Arduino, so I can have my NeoPixels on one and two switches, or whatever I choose, on the others. So. That means I can activate different lights when I tilt the head in a different direction or spin it around really fast or whatever I do. And that's going to be fairly simplistic to fit, I just need to cut holes to let the light out. My plan is to have a light here which appears to be a bluey white which will sort of flicker on and off. I've got the one red LED in the eye already which will be constantly on. I'm going to make a hole to put um, a NeoPixel in there and a diffuser so I can have the hollow projector light up. And then there should be two lights on the side and one of those looks like a pair of logic lights and actually on the BB-8 there's one further back which I'm going to ignore. So I'm just going to probably have one block of light here with another orange surround so I need to cut those holes out. I've drilled a little hole in each one and I'm going to use this which is a reamer to basically ream that hole out so we're just going to turn that 
and slowly make that hole bigger. If it's still too small, we use a Dremel tool to just bring it out. These are the parts that are going to go in the hollow projector and that little piece below the big eye. So these are going to be printed in transparent ABS and I've left uh, sort of areas in the bottom there and this one is upside down so the area there will be for the NeoPixel to fit in and that should diffuse the light quite nicely into those. So in Slicer I've used concentric infill in about 20%. So hopefully you can see that that means I get these concentric circles inside which should help carry the light forwards but we'll see how well that works once I've printed them. I've printed those parts so we've got the thing there whatever it is and obviously that's quite deep and it's got that recess in the back so I can mount the NeoPixel. There's a hole here for the hollow projector so the NeoPixel gets shoved in the back and I've printed the lens part which is quite a snug fit. Perhaps I can't get that out. There we go. So that fits in there, it's going to be glued in but I've printed a ring as well for it to sit on so that it sits at exactly the right height and that will be glued in eventually. And then we've got this logic display and what I've done is printed a sort of bezel with a kind of rim round it and another clear piece in the middle. And this was printed in orange ABS but then I've just painted the front and sanded it a bit to match the colour exactly. So I need to make a, carefully make a square hole to fit that in there. And then again I'll glue a couple of NeoPixels on the back so we can make the colours change. <laughs> I've written a little bit of code, so I've uh, got these wires where the tilt switch will be attached, which I have to um, decide where that's going to be, so it's at the right angle. I've got obviously my red LED is on in the eye all the time, but if I just touch these wires together, we should get a pleasing sequence of other things lighting up, including the hollow projector and the logics and the little thing there. Pretty random and obviously I can change anything in code and it results in everything being off until the next time the tilt switch is triggered then it does it all again for a few seconds. I've painted the ring silver on that skirt piece and I've now fixed this in and what I've done is printed some tabs on the inside and that's just a solvent weld and that helps hold it onto the inner dome. It's all ABS so I can solvent weld it of acetone. That's purely because this skirt was slightly too small so you can see there's a slight gap there so I've got three of those things making sure it's nice and securely fixed. But I think that looks okay on the whole. Now, in the movie trailer, it looks very much like BB-8's head is going to rotate independently of this silver ring instead of the whole head rotating, or it may be both. Um, and of course that is possible using the dolly that I built, which has this internal rotating piece which rotates the head. So I could have fixed the skirt to the chassis, so when the head rotates, the head would rotate independently of the skirt. Um, but as it is, it's going to be far too critical to get those to line up and rotate. So I've just bonded the skirt onto the head, which is how the stage droid works, which we saw at Celebration. So basically that will have to do for now. Maybe I'll do something different if I do a version 3. My electronics are fixed in there, don't know if you can just see them. And my tilt switch is just glued to the side there. So I've made this battery mount, which is on here. 
Well, I've also extended this up and extended down the lump here so everything runs at the right height. It was about 20 mil higher than I had it before. So now this one, if I take the uh, power lead and let's plug it into the Arduino first. And that will stay permanently in there. And then when I'm ready to fit the head, I can plug this into here. I should be able to wiggle this in. Fit that down, so now that runs. And I've got that tilt switch functioning. So now if I tilt my head backwards enough, let's just support that. And we should find all these lights start to come on and it runs through the sequence. So you should be able to see that we've got the one red light on in the eye and while BB-8 sat there, it can move its head and things, but obviously the other lights don't function till I actually start moving the head around. So I need to tilt it backwards. So if I just push this over here and give it a wiggle, then we should see that the other lights start to come on. So basically it doesn't do anything till I start driving round and turning the head around. If I give it a good spin I can activate it as well. Otherwise it just sits there with one red light on and that sequence will complete and then does this little flash and everything turns off again. My head is of course slightly higher now by about 20 mil and it's obviously got the skirt on, the battery inside and a few other bits and pieces so it's slightly heavier than it was. But things still work okay, I can still drive okay and um, you know things work out okay and if I want to turn those lights on there we go we've got the lights on the head now just by giving that a tilt in the right direction everything seems to be running okay with those wheels I'm very careful that they don't get stuck on the brim it looks like I planned that okay. So, um, pretty happy with that so far. There we go, and we've got the lights back on. Whoops. Um, the extra weight and the height doesn't seem to have affected the magnetic coupling too much. I think it runs okay. Um, it's a lot quieter with the panels on and possibly that skirt on potentially uh, seems to deaden any sound, there's not so much echo inside the head you can't hear so much uh, rattling around inside the ball either so yeah pretty happy with how it's just turning out you can see my head is pretty close there you can just see the orange wheels just um, but they don't bind on this skirt and this whole thing seems to move quite freely so pretty happy with how that's turned out that's the end of this episode. Obviously there's some more details to go on the head, some more lines, the aerials and the lens on the eye which I'll be coming back to when I finish it, detail it and weather the whole thing up which I'll be doing once I've done the ball. So next time I am definitely going to look at those LEDs in the ball, fit the slip rings and try and look at the animatronics. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on this project and other projects and check out the social media links in the description to this video.